Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of agriculture found in more developed countries. In this video, we're going to be going over the different types of agriculture found in more developed countries. These are all forms of commercial agriculture. And we're going to be talking about dairy production, grain production, mixed crop and livestock, ranching, and also Mediterranean agriculture. These are going to be important to understand. And throughout the video, make sure you're taking notes. You can use your own notes or you could use my notes that I've created to go with the video. You can find my notes in the description below. Also, make sure you're writing down all the different locations that these are practiced in. That's going to be important to remember when it comes to our test. So all these are different types of forms of commercial agriculture. If you don't know the difference between commercial agriculture and subsistence agriculture, feel free to click the link in the top right and check out my video that covers that particular topic. That's going to be important to know to understand all these different concepts. And in the United States, one of the most popular and most common forms of agriculture is mixed crop and livestock farming. This is where we have animals and also crops being raised and produced on a farm. Now, they work together. The animals provide maneuver that fertilizes the crops, and the crops can provide food for the animals. We have workloads here that are distributed throughout the year, and income comes in throughout the year. In the winter, then, farmers take care of more of the animals, and that is their primary concern. In the summer and the spring, we start to see then a shift towards more of the crop production. The majority of money that is coming in here, though, is through animals. That's where the farmers are making most of their money. And a lot of the United States farmland is dedicated to this type of agriculture. The most important area is from Ohio to the Dakotas, with the center around Iowa. But mixed crop agriculture is really important for the United States and many countries around the world. Now, the two main crops that are planted in the U.S. is corn followed by soybeans. And one of the ways that farmers make sure that their land stays healthy and fertile is by using crop rotation. This system started off as a two-field system in Europe and developed all the way up to a four. Now, what this is, is farmers will designate plots of land within their own land that they own. And they'll plant different crops each year. Different crops take different nutrients out of the soil. So by rotating crops and not planting the same one year after year, farmers are able to get better yield and also protect their land. Our next type of agriculture is commercial gardening and fruit farming. This is also known as truck farming. And the reason why it is, is this is very efficient, this type of farming is. We're actually gonna keep labor costs down by traditionally hiring migrants or migrant workers, sometimes even illegal immigrants. And what happens here then is the food that is picked and harvested gets processed and frozen or canned and then shipped off in a truck across the country. This then gets to the local convenience stores and grocery stores for Americans to be able to purchase food from. So it's going to be important for you to remember that. It's also going to be important for you to remember where all these different things are located. Not just this type of agriculture, but all the other ones within this video. You can see the location of this type of agriculture on the screen right now. Make sure that you're writing that down. That's going to be important to understand. Crops here, though, are going to be like apples, asparagus. We're going to see cherries and lettuce, mushrooms and tomatoes. These are things that are going to be processed and are going to be, essentially, when you get to a store, seen as freshly picked. Now, some of these, they're picked earlier with added chemicals. Then they ripen in the truck. This is a very popular form, and it makes it so now the grocery stores for the United States are no longer having seasons. We can get food 24 hours a day throughout the entire year without having to worry about is it in season or not because of this type of agriculture. The next form of agriculture is dairy production. Now this one's seen a lot of changes over the years. One in just the location of where it's being produced. You can see on the screen over here all the different areas where dairy production is now occurring around the world. And dairy production's had a lot of changes within technology, and this has reshaped where we locate these production facilities. Now, originally, the milk shed, milk shed being an area which we could send dairy products to without it expiring, was very small. Over time, though, with the invention of railroads and refrigeration, the milk shed has expanded. So now we have these production facilities that can ship further away to the consumer. They don't have to be right next to a large urban area. However, if we remember from Von Thunen, and if you need a refresher on that, you can check out the video on the top right. That will help you out. We know that still dairy production has to be somewhat close to urban centers. 
And one big difference here is dairy production is not sold directly to consumers. It's sold to wholesalers. And that's gonna be important to remember. Now I talked about a milk shed and how it's changed over time. In the 1840s, when railroads were just starting to be created, the milk shed was actually about 30 miles. Today, it's over 300 miles. And that's just because of the advancements in technology that we have and how we can ship things further and faster. Even though we've had changes in technology, dairy farming is still really labor intensive. And there is a lot of technology with it, so it's very expensive as well. Cows need to be milked at least twice a day, and that is time consuming. And food can get really expensive, particularly in the winter, when you have to get hay and feed and other things to be able to feed the cows. And there's a lot of regulations and fine red tape that are on this industry. So this industry is very hard to get into, and it's very hard to make a profit. And unfortunately, today, farmers have been struggling, who have been focusing on this type of food production. Our next type of agriculture is grain farming. Here is where we're seeing things as corn and oat and wheats and rice and barley and millet all being produced. Now this is different than our mixed crop and livestock farming because the majority of the food here is for human consumption, not for animals. And we also see some different breakdowns with wheat belts within the United States. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Grain farming though is very mechanicalized and it's actually helped it grow. When we originally saw the McCormick Reaper, which would allow farmers to cut grain standing, we saw production start to soar. Then with the combine, we saw it go even further. Now we have machines that will cut the grain, thresh the grain, and get everything set for market. And we have seen efficiency shoot up. We've also started to see our agricultural density go down. Agricultural, physiological, arithmetic densities. If you need refreshers on those, again, check out some of the other videos on the channel. If you can't tell, I got a bunch of them, particularly with human geography. So I talked about the wheat belts that are part of the grain production, and there's two of them. We have the spring wheat belt, which is located in the Dakotas, Montana, and Southern Saskatchewan, Canada. Here, winters are way too severe for there to be production throughout the winter. If you were to plant in the fall, well, the winter would freeze through, kill the roots, and the plant would die. So here, farmers need to plant in the spring and harvest in the fall. We also, though, have a winter wheat belt, and this is located in Kansas, Colorado, and Oklahoma. Here, the winters aren't as severe. Farmers can actually plant in the fall, and the root system will develop over the winter. Then when winter comes and it gets cold, it'll kind of hibernate. Then in the spring, it'll start growing right away. That way they can harvest earlier in the summer time. So these two different wheat belts are able to produce different forms of crops to be able to support the countries and also the world throughout the year. The next type of agriculture we're talking about is the Mediterranean agriculture. This is located on a border of a sea and it's located on the west coast where we can have the breeze from the ocean coming into the land. This helps moderate winters and also helps provide moisture in summers. This is really important because this allows certain very unique specialty crops to be able to be grown. On the screen right now, you can see the different locations for this type of agriculture around the world. Now, this type of agriculture is unique because it can produce some unique items. Now, some of them are common, such as fruits and vegetables, but it also produces flowers, trees, grapes, and olives for people around the world. And the majority of the products that are produced here are for human use or human consumption, not for animals or for other products. The next type of agriculture we're going to talk about is livestock ranching. Now, originally, this dominated Texas from 1867 to about 1885. Until we started to see the demand for beef increase in other parts of the United States. See, ranching had taken off in Texas, which had created a huge supply of beef, which had drastically lowered than the price of it due to competition. However, as demand for other areas increased and the supply wasn't there, we started to see ranchers move. So for example, originally in Texas, people were getting paid about three to four dollars for the head of a cattle. However, Chicago started to have a big demand for beef and they were willing to pay 30 to 40 dollars a head. So we started to see a migration of ranchers throughout the country to be able to bring product to areas that had a demand for it and would offer a higher monetary value. This type of agriculture was pretty popular with Hollywood, and that was because of these old Western movies. And this form of agriculture was pretty dominant throughout the United States for a while until we started to see the government sell off some of this public land to private owners. Now these private owners wanted to start their own businesses, wanted to control their land. 
Some of them became farmers, and so they didn't want these random cattle coming on and grazing and trampling their crops. So the range wars started, and this was this conflict between private landowners and also ranchers. Private landowners started putting up fences to keep out farmers who were trying to get into their land, predominantly the ranchers, and they didn't want their cattle to be able to get in and gain access. What happened then is these ranchers started cutting down their fences, and this escalated this back and forth. Eventually, barbed wire won the day for the private industry or the private individuals. The fences started having barbed wire on it, which made it difficult for the ranchers to be able to get in. And that led to the decline of ranching. Today, we see the majority of ranching happening on government-owned land. Ranchers are now leasing the land that they are operating their businesses on. 60%, in fact, are living and operating on government-owned land. And we're starting to see a shift with more people starting to produce food within the whole ranching industry, at least, on CAFOs, in these fattening farms, where cows are being sent to an area, getting fattened up, and then going through the industrialized food system. The industrialized food system is a very complicated topic. There's a lot going on there. We have antibiotics, the use of machines, fattening farms, there's a debate over cows eating grass or corn and all these different aspects of it. And we're probably going to spend more time on that topic in another video. But I hope this video helps you better understand the different types of agriculture that are practiced in more developed countries. It's going to be important to understand what types of products are produced for all these different topics and also where they're located. And again, just the basics of what they operate and what's going on and how they've changed over time. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found value in the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.